In this video, I'll show you how to configure an NFS server on Oracle Linux 8. We'll install the NFS utils package, create a folder to share, and add it to the etc exports file. Then we'll configure the firewall and enable the NFS service. And finally, we'll take a look at the export fs command. NFS stands for Network File System, and it's a protocol that allows directories to be mounted in a local file system which means that on a client system, the directories appear as if they're on local storage. So you can interact with files over a network the same way you would on a local file system. It's well supported in Linux, but other operating systems may encounter issues. So depending on your environment, you may want to look at a different sharing solution. But it does provide a more permanent connection, which can be a good choice for sharing between servers. Let's get started by installing the NFS utils package. We'll mostly be working as root, so I'll enter sudo su. I'll use dnf install nfs utils. Then I'll clear the screen. Next, we'll create something to share with our client system. If you already have a directory set up, feel free to use that instead. But for this demo, I'll create a folder with a few files in it. I'll write mkdir slash nfs share, which is what I'm going to call my shared folder. I'll create a couple dummy files using fallocate l. I'll specify 10 megabytes, then my directory, and I'll call it file1. I'll repeat with file2. I'll also create a text file so we can see what happens when someone alters a shared file. I'll use vi slash nfs share, and I'll call it sharedtext.txt. I'll add a line here so we have some content. I'll just say this is a shared text file, and I'll go ahead and save that. If we use ls-lh to look at the folder, we can see the three files we just created, but we'll want to change the permissions so that other users can have access and change the content in this folder. I'll do chmod-r777 slash nfs share. This will grant everyone access, but of course, depending on your situation, you may want to alter the permissions differently than I have here. Now that we've created a folder to share, the next step is to identify it as an NFS export, which is done in the etc exports file. I'll open the file with vi slash etc slash exports. Initially, this file will be empty. The syntax here is the path we want to export, followed by the host, and any options in parentheses. I'll add the path to the folder I just created, then I'll specify the host. There are many different ways to identify the host, such as domain name, specific IP address, a range of addresses, and so on. But to find out more, you should look at the man pages for exports. For this demo, I'll use the IP address of my client system, then I'll specify some options. By default, hosts are granted read-only access, so I'll use the RW option to specify read-write access. It's important to make sure that you don't have a space between your host and the options. If I were to add a space, like this, I'd be granting this first host read-only access because there are no options specified directly after it. And then, since there's nothing in front of these options, there's actually an implicit wildcard here. So we'd be granting all hosts read-write access, which could cause a big security issue. So you'll want to make sure that there are no spaces between your host and the options. In this case, I'm only going to specify the RW option, but depending on your situation, you may need to also adjust root squashing. So let's take a minute to look at squashing in more detail. Because NFS exports act as though they are part of the client file system, the exports participate in the client system's permission scheme, which can cause issues if the numeric ID of users and groups overlap in the two systems. For example, if on the server system that contains the NFS export, there's a server user with the numeric ID of 1000, and on the client system, there's a client user with that same numeric ID of 1000. When the client accesses the NFS export, the server system has no way of telling the difference between the server user and the client user, because they have the same numeric ID. Depending on your situation, this may or may not be an issue. Where it does become a problem is when a client user accesses the NFS export as the root user, because then the client user will appear to be the root on the server system, so they will have root access to the export, meaning they could make changes to the files or permissions and potentially cause a problem. Because of this threat, by default, NFS squashes the root account and remaps it to a user called nobody, which has very few permissions. 
You can turn off root squashing by specifying the no root squash option, but that's generally not recommended. You can use the all squash option to map all users that access the export to this nobody user. And in addition, you can use the Anon UID and Anon GID options to specify the user ID and group ID that all client users are treated as on the server system. For example, you might specify something like this, which would map all users that access the export to the user ID of 150 and group ID of 100. Returning to our exports file, I won't adjust the squash settings. I'll just leave the RW option and save the file. The final step is to configure the firewall and enable the NFS service. Depending on your situation, your firewall settings may be different, but for this demo, I'll use firewall cmd dash dash permanent dash dash zone equals public dash dash add service equals NFS. Then I'll restart the firewall with firewall cmd dash dash reload, and I'll check to make sure that the NFS service has been added to the firewall by using the list all option. And we can see that NFS is listed as one of the services. Next, I'll start the NFS service with systemctl start NFS server. Then I'll use systemctl enable NFS server, which will ensure that the service starts following a system reboot. With the NFS server now running, I can use the show mount e command to view the exports, and we can see our NFS share directory listed here. There may be a need for you to add or delete an export without restarting the NFS service. To do this, you can use the export fs command. Let's create a second directory to export. I'll use mkdir slash nfsshare2. If I temporarily want to share this export, I could use exportsfs. Then, because we haven't added the share to the export file, I'll want to use dash i, which tells it to ignore the etc exports file, then dash o for options. I'll do rw, then for simplicity, I'll allow all hosts access. I'll do wildcard colon slash nfsshare2. Now when I run show mount e both exports are listed, but this isn't a permanent change to the exports file, so if the server were to reboot, or if I were to restart the NFS service, like this, share2 is no longer listed as an export. If we want the share to persist through a restart, we can add it to the ECT exports file, and then use the export fs-r command. So I'll open the exports file real quick using vi. I'll add a line for NFS share2, then I'll save the file. Then I'll run exportsfs-r. Now if we use the show mount e command, we can see that both exports are listed. And if we restart the service, both exports are still listed. That's it for setting up the NFS server. Be sure to watch the video on how to mount an NFS export where I'll show you how to connect to the export from a client system. And to learn more about Oracle Linux, check out the Oracle Linux 8 learning path and visit the Linux Learning Library for videos on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager, and other Oracle products. Thanks for watching.